All right, it's been a minute, new video. So what are we covering today? Today we're gonna to be covering the Prisma, Scana, and Cardon. The reason I'm covering this weapon is because, well, it's one of the weapons I thought I'd never cover purely because I think the gimmick of the weapon didn't really fit in the playstyle I play or how the game is currently going, but I think I'll still cover it to see if people enjoy the way the weapon works, how it feels, and see if they can mix it in better than I can, because to me, this weapon can be outclassed by using other things. So we'll cover the evolutions, the build I made, testing it in the simulacrum, and then we'll go to a still path mission where we will test it against moving enemies. So let's cover those evolutions, shall we? So with Evolution 1, you get the ability to stun nearby enemies when entering Chronoform and getting a finisher attack on enemies. It gives you plus 100% melee damage, plus 20% sprint speed, and plus 20% to parkour velocity. Next up of Evolution 2, you get Guardian's Promise and Wartime Nerve. Guardian's Promise will give you 100 base damage increase and will give you plus 80% heavy attack efficiency whenever you have overshields. Wartime Nerve will increase your base damage by 90, but it will give you 9 combo count on undamaged enemies. Since most of the time when using this weapon, you should be hitting enemies that are either, well, not damaged or just freshly walking towards you. So you should be able to get a free uh, skyrocket in your combo count to instantly get the um, Incarnon. But if you wish, you can also use Guardian's Promise. Next up with Evolution 3, you get Oricon Reach, Resolute Force, and Swift Break. Oricon Reach gives you plus 0.4 range, Resolute Force will give you plus 6 seconds combo duration, and Swift Break will give you plus 50% heavy attack wind up speed. To me, the only real good option here would be Oricon Reach for the additional range since the combo duration you really don't need if you're running the correct uh, focus tree, and you really don't need heavy attack wind up speed since this weapon already attacks really quickly. Finally, with Evolution 4, we get Survivor's Edge, Elemental Excess, and Absolute Valor. Survivor's Edge will give you plus 12% base crit chance and plus 10% base status chance. Elemental Excess will give you plus 20% base status chance, and Absolute Valor will increase your crit chance by a base of 25%. With this one, all of these are very useful. It's all dependent on how you plan on building a weapon. To me, Survivor's Edge has a really good place, but so does Absolute Valor, so you could pick either of these two. Dealer's choice. So, let's cover the build, test in the simulacrum, and then go do a real mission, shall we? So, with the builds, I have two for you today. I have a melee influence build, like basically every other melee weapon in the game does, and I have a corpus build. So, we'll cover the melee influence build, corpus build, then we'll go test it. So, when it comes to the melee influence build, it's kind of bog standard for basically every weapon. You'll have blood rush, weeping wounds, uh, some form of element. This one's going to be Viral and Shocking Touch, so we can use Melee Influence, obviously. Organ Shatter for more crit damage, since we're running a crit build. Melee Elementalist, just because it increased the damage dealt by Slash, and since we're also doing Electricity, might as well take full advantage of it. And Conditional Overload, because this build usually will be ran with a Priming Pet or a Priming Weapon. Next up is the Corpus build. Corpus build is going to be higher in damage because I have Prime Fever Strike maxed out. Sadly, I don't have Primed uh, Shocking Touch. So we have Blood Rush, Conditional Overload, uh, Weeping Wounds, Organ Shatter, Melee Element list vicious frost voltaic strike dreamer's wrath prime fever strike no the reason there's not another dash mod here so i could fit this in here without wasting another forma so this is made it to where it's just four forma and this one runs melee vortex to pull in the enemies and then cause toxin on them so we'll cover the melee influence build first then the corpus build so i didn't bring my prim priming pets so we could actually show off what the incarnon does so let's quickly just get the incarnon up as you see i'm running uh arcane strike so i get more so when we proc the incarnon I see everyone is now in like stun finisher range and as long as you can keep like doing it you can keep the like the whole what is the word flow going where as long as you keep getting these finishers off wow he is not dying as long as you can keep getting them off they'll keep getting stunned but sometimes that will happen where you can't do it but then you can just proc it again so while the incarnon is quite nice and does have its way of being used I feel like its gimmick is not really valuable if I'm going to get killed attempting to do it. Purely because in that scenario there, if they were moving, I would have died. Just straight up would have died. Also, something I should have mentioned is that the Incarnon's first evolution does affect Slash Dash. So you will be getting that melee uh, damage increase to your Slash Dash. So let's go ahead and cover the next build. So you're probably enjoying the video right now, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. So if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure you guys hit the like button. Do subscribe and turn on that bell for post notifications so you always get notified whenever I post another video. If you want to see more stuff like this, comment it down below and what you want to see next. Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'll see y'all in the rest of the video. So now we have the Corpus build. Once again, 160 Steel Path enemies. So while this build will probably do a bit better against these guys since it gets us our uh, Incarnon much faster. And I see it kind of magnetic kind of chains now. I saw that was much faster, mainly because, well, melee vortex is quite nice. But in that case, I may have still possibly had died and the Incarnon effect really didn't get a chance to do its like whole thing purely because if you just suck in enemies, it's kind of hard to, you know, get finishers on them. But I see the weapon is quite strong and it's quite hard. So I'll show off the Excalibur build real fast and then we'll go to a Steel Path mission and test it there. 
Here's the Excalibur Umbra build we'll be taking with him, purely because his passive does increase the amount of damage you deal with swords. We have Steel Charge for more melee damage. Warrior's Rest, because this way I don't lose buffs whenever I pop in and out of Umbra, and it also gives me a free 50% increase to my ability strength. Umbral, all the Umbral mods, since they were given to us for free on these little form of spots. Prime Flow for more energy. Archon Continuity for more duration, but use Prime Continuity if you have it. Transient Forward 2 for more uh, strength. Prime Sure Footed so I don't get knocked on my ass. And Adaptation so I take less damage. Arcane Strike to take full advantage of not putting any uh, attack speed mods on my weapon. This way is how I get it. And Arcane Avenger is so I get more uh, crit chance. But if you wanted, you could easily run um, Arcane Fury so that on crit hit, you get more melee damage. So I will see y'all in the Steel Path mission. So we're in the mission. Oh, hey. Sculpture. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and proc Gloom because I am running it on this build. I went and swapped back to the melee influence build because whenever I originally came in here, I completely forgot to. So uh, I came in. Enemies and it does keep going. The only issue with it is the range it has. Due to its limited range, you really aren't going to be getting that far. And I am unsure if it is affected by using things like Prime to Reach. As far as I could tell, it didn't, <clears throat> didn't seem to. But maybe it did and I just wasn't paying close enough attention to it. But obviously that would require me to test it a little bit further. But as far as I noticed, I did not see it progressing with range. But And I did have Prime Reach on the build originally. So maybe I did miss it or... Maybe it just doesn't work that way. But this weapon does work quite well for a melee, well, weapon. Compared to other ones that I have used before, I do actually like the feel of the Skana because it is a very nice sword to use. It has a nice uh, set of, what are they? Uh, stances. There you go. Brain's working again. They have a very nice set of stances as I do enjoy using the same one that comes from, what's his name? Uh, Stalker. What is it? Veg, uh, Venge Dread. Some, something like that. I don't know it exactly. I just know it's got his quotes on it it's really not a bad uh, stance though not the biggest fan of its block attack though but it's not that bad because it does multi-hit but as you can tell outside of the like the mishap i had at the start i'm not really having any issues and with the help of a priming pet everything dies quite quickly so i'll come back whenever a uh acolyte spawns since so i will see y'all then all right and the acolyte is finally starting to spawn as you see i really haven't well as you see I finally decided to try and get the uh, whole Incarnon effect to actually do something. Where's this guy? Hello? Oh, there he is. Not bad. Really nicely. So, in the time that I have been killing all these enemies and kind of just messing around, what I've noticed is it is quite difficult, I'd say, to want to proc the whole Incarnon's little special thing where you get to make um, enemies get stunned is the best way it is. They kind of just get stunned. They don't get much else outside of that whenever i could just you know press two and then i can do that but the gimmick of this weapon is not bad it is quite fun i just wish it was a little bit easier to proc because as you see i'm having to manually go out of my way to try and proc it so i will head back to my orbiter and i will finish up on this uh Incarnon. so i will see y'all whenever i get back and we're back so what do i think about the Incarnon? overall it's not a bad melee weapon uh, compared to some of the other ones like the hate, I use the hate personally, but I do like the Prisma Scana. It feels nice in my hands. It looks nice to use. It actually doesn't look that bad when you proc its card on. The gimmick with the weapon where it stuns nearby enemies when entering its form and like doing finishers, I think it's more suited for like stealthing more than anything else, mainly due to the fact that it's kind of hard to get that finisher outside of manually making sure I press E on anyone who could have that happen to them. So it kind of struggles in that part. But overall, it's not a bad melee weapon option in the uh, Incarnons. So I'll show off the builds one more time. So here is the Umbra build that I was using. Here is the Prisma Scana melee influence build. Here's the Corpus build. Here is the pet weapon. And the dog. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, day. Make sure you guys hit that like button, do subscribe, and comment down below what weapons you want to see next. There are new mods for the Hate and the Dread. But I think the only one that's actually worth covering would be the Dread, and that one's a little too far gone in the Nightwave. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.